in True Vault Escapade, starring Eric Huffman as Detective Walter Camry and Amy Harris as Bunny. Today's episode, A Cosmic Knife in the Back. We are last left with Detective Walter Camry entering the mysterious underground community known as Vault 54, with his newest companion, Bunny. They ventured into the vault only to meet Overseer Mackenzie, or the vault's honorable leader. He informs Walter that Bunny is a private investigator herself, and that he is the perfect man for the job. He gives Walter a night's stay in the vault, so he'll be well rested in the morning. But on his way there, he witnesses a gruesome murder just outside his room. A young boy killed over something known as Bill 54 closed. And now that the sun has risen, the detective makes haste to the overseer's office. Oh, Detective, you're here early. You bet. There's been a murder. Murder? What the devil do you mean? I mean murder, as in murder. A young man was shot last night as Bunny was showing me to my room. What? How? I didn't hear of this. He was hit in the back three times in the hallway, fell face down, and died in my arms. Oh, no. Oh, no. We saw the assassin make a run for it, and Bunny managed to get a shot off. He got away, but left a trail of blood down the next hall running the sample by the medical bay as we speak. Afterward, she'll send it to the security, who should be able to make a match. This is... this is awful. And just a young man, you say? Probably about 18 or 19. And my security doesn't even bring this up to me? I mean you no offense, but I shouldn't have to rely on an outsider to break this kind of news to me. Oh, something's fishy. That brings me to my next question, Overseer. What in Sam Hill does Bill 54 closed mean? The dying boy gave me a campaign button, which stated he didn't support it. He also said that was the reason he'd been shot. Oh, it's what I meant to talk to you about this morning. You mind telling me what it is? I wish Bunny were here to explain it to you in her terms. She's much simpler than me. Well, that's clearly not the case right now, is it? And I'd prefer you telling me before more innocent lives are lost. Oh, Bill 54 closed is the most anticipated drastic bill that's been brought up to my attention. And it's the most major decision I've ever had to make in my lifetime. Cut the small talk, Mackenzie. If another boy dies, it's going to be on both of our hands. Oh, all right. In shorter terms, a non-supporter of Bill 54 closed is one doesn't want this little vault of ours to stay closed forever. He was shot to death because he didn't want that steel door on the front closed for good? It's a little more complicated than that, sir. Tell it to me straight. Okay. The dawn of war, back in the ancient times, humanity hungered for a way to protect itself from its dreaded end. They didn't want to die from nuclear warheads that had nothing to do with them. So some constructed personal bomb shelters for themselves, or for their families. That clearly wasn't assuring enough. So America did what America did best, capitalize. There was a large, successful company known as vault Tech, who found a better way to protect its country. They built this place, didn't they? Precisely. So all those centuries ago, they planted vaults much like these across the nation, promising to protect all that sign up to enter. Wait a minute. If all you had to do was put your John Hancock on a slip of paper, why didn't everyone hop on board? Aha! That's where the catch came in. It wasn't that easy to afford your protection. It cost money, and a hefty amount at that. There also weren't enough vaults to go around. There were only about a hundred of them. Ah, so that's how humanity survived. In a way, but back to the matter at hand. On October 23rd, 2077, each vault closed. Everyone that signed up was reported safe, according to vault Tech. But mine, mine is experiencing difficulty. This bill must have everyone on edge. Yes, apparently sometime in those 200 years back, vault Tech set a specific time for my vault to make a grand decision. <sighs> Approximately two months ago, I received a very outdated message directly from Vault Tech headquarters, saying that Vault 54 would be sealed away, airtight, or completely open, with absolutely no way to revert. It's one or the other. 
I see where this is going. HQ insisted that I discuss this with my people, which I denied at first. I know how curious they can be about the outside world. Heck, each teacher is authorized to put fear into the mind of every child about the wasteland. But nowadays, they won't budge. There's a point in every time where folks just want the straight-up truth, Mr. Overseer. You can't hide something forever. I know that, but darn it, they just won't give in. So as I was saying, at first the plan was to simply shut the vault permanently behind the public's back. What they don't know won't hurt them, right? But unfortunately, some interloper found Vault Tech's message on my computer terminal and spread it to the public. I tried to downsize it, but that was a waste of time. Ever since then, my people have been tearing each other apart. One side wants the vault to stay open, and the other closed. They all know I'm the one in charge of pushing the button, so both sides have been giving me death threats. And I... I just don't know what to do. Easy now, Mackenzie. Don't lose your head. Are you saying the boy was killed over his political decision? Forget about the darn boy for a second, Camry. If the issue isn't solved soon, everyone's gonna have holes in their backs. You get me? Yeah... I get you. The vault remaining open or closed isn't the main concern at the moment, Detective. I believe there's some sort of conspiracy among us. Conspiracy? Yes, but a week after the information was released to the public, strange rumors about an underground militia were forming. I paid it no mind until the bodies started piling, all of them supporters of the vault door remaining closed. You have any idea why? Not in the slightest, but whoever's behind it is giving me a message. Oh, they don't care who they kill, or when, just as long as they support the closure of our vault. It's sickening, I know. But I don't get it, Overseer. If folks want to leave, and some want to stay, why not just open the vault to those who wish to venture the wastelands? It's their grave, and they're digging it. But heck, it's their choice. You don't understand. If I simply let the Bill's non-supporters slip away, it'll dwindle down our numbers for those that choose to stay. Which means... We won't last but another five generations. And nothing boils my blood more than people who've known each other their whole lives, just bailing overboard like that. Thinking for themselves is what they're doing. No, we'll shrivel up and die as a people if I let that happen. And about 50% of the vault wants that darn door open. I just... I won't let that happen. If we make a choice this big, we make it as a community. So whatever the state of the vault door is, everyone is going to respect that. If the door stays, we all stay. If the door opens, we all venture the wasteland, together. This bill is more serious than I thought. More than you know, Mr. Camry. But I don't get it. What makes that 50% want to leave so badly? Like I said, they're too curious. If I let them take a peek out there, they'll try and run off, which will force me to have security put them down. That'll worsen things for the vault. I'm already trying to hold back a full-on war in here. If I let the non-supporters get a taste of life out there, they'll stop at nothing to go back. So, I'm assuming if you wanted the heat to be a little less hot, you turned it into a democratic decision, one that's up to the people and not you. Yes, but that's only because the info was leaked. If it was up to me, I'd have the vault door closed, be done with this little venture. So, what exactly do you need me for, Mr. McKenzie? Why an outsider? If Bunny's a private investigator here, why not just have her look into the matter? She tried. <sighs> but nothing came up. Time was ticking, and none of her methods were working. That's surprising. The girl was quite a catch, you know. As true as that may be, she didn't get through to anybody. Drastic times call for drastic measures, I suppose. So I had to slip away through the vault door under the supervision of Officers Jensen and O'Neill. The plan was for her to find someone that was smart, kept their ear to the ground, had absolutely no ties to the vault. It would be too risky to use someone else on the case from here. They're most likely fixated on turning down that bill. She told me she sent out a radio transmission as well. Yes, I put her up to it. Is there something wrong with that? Don't do that. You can't just have anyone picking up a rogue transmission from a place such as this. I've met people out there that would kill to get the technology you guys have here. Noted. For starters, I'd like... Overseer Mackenzie? Yes, who is this? It's Bunny. We found something you'd probably like to see in the lab. Does it involve the murder? Affirmative. Then I'll be sending Mr. Camry down there. I have too much work to do with the public. Understood. We'll be waiting for you, Detective. That's probably about the blood sample you mentioned earlier. The medical wing is on the fourth floor. She's probably with Dr. Daniels. 
He's the shorter man with sleek brown hair, probably wearing a lab coat. You can't miss him. Thank you, Overseer. I'll see that justice is served in this vault. Oh, Walter, you're here. I came as soon as you called. What's happening? Walter, this is Dr. Daniels. Dr. Daniels, this is Detective Walter Camry. He's from the Wasteland. Ah, so you're the outsider I've heard so much about. I'm glad to see our assumptions were wrong. Yeah, we're not all bad. <laughs> so you have that blood sample match for us? It was a pain to perform, but yes, it's done. Come with me, please. So what's this here? Though this may be news to you, Detective, modern vault technology has allowed us to analyze the exact same blood type and DNA strands of any legal vault resident. That's interesting. Getting shot was the perpetrator's worst mistake, thanks to our friend Bunny here. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Now that he's left a trail of his own DNA down the hall, it was only a matter of time before we'd match it. Heck, even leaving a single speck of blood in the ground could have meant his downfall. All right, Doctor. That was enough to excite an egghead. But bringing this cow to justice is a real treasure here. Your spirit. I like it. The culprit's name is Marty Carlone. He lives on floor 3, room 24. Not too far from the crime scene. <gasps> Old man Carlone? Why, he couldn't hurt anybody. If you didn't know, Bunny, Carlone used to operate the most violent mob in vault history. Security finally got proof of his endeavors and had him sent to prison for about 30 years, I believe. A little short of a year or so, he got out. My guess is that Carlone's gang ditched him, making him move to bigger and better things, like joining the underground militia I've been hearing so much about. He couldn't have. There's only one way to find out. Come on, Bunny. I'm telling you, I will never kill someone. A likely story. I also hear that you ran a mob some 30 years ago. Want to explain that? Yes, yeah, sir. I operate an underorganized crime. But, but I'm a changed man now. Prisons reformed me. I tried to tell them. Really now? That's a first. I mean it. I support the bill and all, but I would never kill anyone over it. You can even check me for bullet wounds. I've got nothing to hide. All right, wise guy. This genetic magic the doctor pulled off from nowhere isn't something I've bought yet. So I still believe there's a chance you're not faking it. You own any guns? A pistol. In my drawer over there. Go get it, Bunny. A licensed 9mm registered back in 42. I never had to shoot the thing, if that's what you're wondering. Well, he's right about one thing. The gun's never been fired. The thing looks brand new. You have a history of guns back in your younger years, Carlone? Of course not. It's not like the old Mafia Hall tapes in here. We had to resort to beating most of our contracts to death, choking, or using blunt objects. The vault isn't like the outside, where you can just pick up any weapon you want and keep it. There's rules, regulations in here, so guns were a rarity in my line of work. Hmm. And besides, Walter, our murder victim was killed with a 10 millimeter. Not a nine millimeter. You really want to know why I'm not the killer? <gasps> oh no, Mr. Carlone. All right, up you go. Come on, help me put him back in his chair, Bunny. Of course. All right, back in your chair. Now, Mr. Carlone, why on earth would you go and collapse like that? Because that proves I didn't do it, you see? I have a bum leg. She was right. There's no way an old, frail man such as Marty could get away so quickly in the hall, let alone the fact his leg hardly working. Something wasn't right about all this. How'd you get that bum leg there, Mr. Carlone? Scuffle in the prison a few years back. Got jumped by Don Morella's men on the inside. Broke my leg, but didn't get it fixed upright. Simple as that. And then it's clear that the blood sample was wrong. Something's fishy in this case. But our only lead is a sample, Walter. I don't think Mr. Carlone is guilty either, but where do we go from here? I know where. The crime scene. Come on, Bunny. Sorry to disturb you, Mr. Carlone.
Well, we're here on the third level, Walter. Now what in the name of the Overseer could be so important here? Pay attention, Bunny. This place should have more significance than we thought, if I'm right. I sure hope so. If we don't get any closer to the crook soon, I could lose my job and you could lose your pay. That won't be necessary. Now, do you remember what exactly was going on when we stood here last night? I believe we were a few paces from the elevator, walking and talking, just as we are now. Yes, Bunny. You were showing me to my room, and the hall was bustling. Yes, Walter, I know that. Now stand here. And I was already standing here. So let's just keep walking. All right. Okay, stop. So, what happened here? About right here is when we heard the gunshots. The boy fell, and the mask man was slightly leaning from the corner of the next hallway. Where are you going with this? Now, take a step forward. Easy now. Okay, right there. You remember what exactly happened here? Well, I think this is about where I pulled out my gun. Exactly. Now do it again. Pull my gun out? Yes, Bunny. There's no one out here to see you. Well, all right. Okay, Walter, now what? Now I want you to aim it exactly where you did at the assassin. As accurate as you can remember. Okay, I think I was about right here when I shot at him. Good, Bunny. Now stay right there in that position, while I trace exactly where the sights are pointed. Oh, and make sure the safety's on. All right, Walter. Just hurry. My arm's getting tired. All right. Just stay there. I'm about halfway to the wall now. Hurry, Walter. Okay, I'm at the wall. Here we are. Can I stop now? Yes, yes. Come over to the back wall. You want to see this. Now, what is it that's so important we had to come all the way down here for? Trust me, it's well worth the visit. Now, do you remember how many shots you took? Um, just two. Why do you ask? Correct. And how many made actual contact with the assassin? Only one. You know that. Wrong. What? Look here, on the wall. Now, what do you see? Well, I think that's... that's a dent from the shot I missed last night. Exactly. Where do you think the second shot landed? In the assassin, right? Nope. Look here. Why? Why, that's... A second dent, meaning both rounds missed. Looks like you aren't too fancy with that gun after all, Bunny. But but that's impossible. I shot the killer dead on. We heard him scream and everything. Ah, but on the contrary, he pretended to be shot. Faked the scream and all. But wait. If the whole thing was staged and the man wasn't shot... Whose blood was that down the hallway? That's what I'm meaning to find out. Marty Carlone was framed. Come on, Bunny. We're going back to Dr. Daniels. Detective, Bunny, what brings you back here so quick? Your medical logs, Doctor. We want to see them. My logs, Detective? I may be a wastelander, but I'm not stupid. You must have a register of some sort. Um, you mean my personal medical documents of my patients. I know that this is a murder case here, Walter, but what you're requesting is something for a doctor's eyes only. You're going to hand me your recent patient documents, whether you like it or not. Now, where are they? Oh, um, well, I keep my most recent ones in the filing cabinet down here. Here's a stack of this week's files. I'll put them on this table here. I honestly don't know what you're expecting to find in here, but I guess if it's in the name of justice... Then why were you so defensive? Well, I'm sure you wouldn't like to have some stranger looking through your belongings. Now, would you? Say, where's that Marty fellow? You catch him? No. What? Why? Because there's no need of him being caught. Ah, here we are. Whose record is that, Walter? The man we wasted our time interrogating. Looks like the doctor here had a little visit with Marty Carlone the other day. I uh, yes I did. That's one of the files we used to get a match of the on the crook. Oh, he's no crook, doctor. We checked. You mean you didn't cuff him? You just came and went? Detective, the man may look innocent and frail, but he's one of the biggest criminals the vault's ever known. That may be true, but he said the jail really changed him. He also said he was jumped in there by his family's former rivals, the Morelli family. Left him with a bum leg, 
And believe me, he tried to walk, but fell almost instantly. And you believe that? I was sure buying it. Hmm. It says here that you ran a diabetes test on Carlone that day. Yes, tested positive for type 2. Saddening, really, but I guess that's what he gets for performing such a gruesome murder. Judging from my pre-war studies, that requires blood to be extracted. Am I correct? Um, yes. Yes, it does. All right. Where is it? Uh, it's in the back room, where we keep all biological samples, b but we can't get back there. It's a, a restricted area. Only authorized personnel are allowed in there. Well, you're a doctor. You take us back there. By golly, he's lying through his teeth. Why, Dr. Daniels? No, I'm not. How dare you persecute me in such a way, and in my own office? Then if authorized persons are allowed back there, go ahead and call them in. I'm sure they'd be glad to bring us a sample. B but I don't. Now, Daniels. Uh, all right, but I'm telling you, they, they won't. Just do as we ask. <sighs> Fine. Martha? Yes, Dr. Daniels? D do we happen to have the Marty Carlone blood test vial in stock by any chance? Um, let me see. Wait, doctor? Yes? That sample's been missing for a day now. You know that. What? No, I don't. Yes, you're the one that told me. No, 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 I, I never. When, when did this happen? Hold it right there, Daniels. Keep your finger on the button. I, I... Ma'am, this is Detective Camry. I want you to tell me all that you know about the missing sample. Daniels had Mr. Carlone come into his office for a physical the other day. I asked how it went, and he said the results weren't good. I tried to pry a little bit more, but he said it was too much for a receptionist to know. Poor Mr. Carlone. He's such a nice man. But anyway, I was clocking out last night, and I couldn't help but see a strange man walk in. A strange man? How strange? Can you describe him? He wore a strange jacket with a hood on it. I tried to ask if he had an appointment, but he flashed a badge at me and walked on. Could you make out the badge? I don't know. It was too dark. But he walked towards Dr. Daniel's office, and he didn't come out for about an hour. Oh, it was very questionable. Questionable, indeed. I don't need this. Please, Walter, if you'd let me explain. Could you make out anything more specific? His build, perhaps? Oh, yes. He was a notably large man. A little over six feet, I think. And how'd you know the vial was missing? When I came in the next day, some of the doctors were chattering about Marty's missing blood sample. They meant to have another small test to be certain he had type 2, but it vanished before they could do anything. Thank you, ma'am. You've been a big help. <laughs> Interns, am I right? <laughs> yep. Probably the most helpful one you've ever hired. Now spill it, Daniels. <laughs> spill what? Whatever went on between you and the mysterious man. You don't have a wall of lies to protect you now. You're finished. Just like this case is about to be. I was bribed, all right. Took the bait and gave in. Is that what you want? Well, now you know it. Why'd you do it, Doctor? Yes, I've known you for years, Dr. Daniels. How could you frame poor Marty like that? Frame? What are you talking about? Don't pull that last-minute bunk on me, Daniels. I mean it. I don't know what you're talking about. I just gave the man the vial. Nothing more was said after that. Impossible. We found Marty Carlone's blood at the crime scene. The one you tested for us. Wouldn't you find that even the slightest suspicious? That you found a drop of blood that belonged to a patient whose vial you sold? Look, let me explain. The man that walked in was associated with internal vault security. The best of the best. You don't just deny them access to your patient's records. I mean, look at me. I let you do it. And he bribed you. I had no choice. He wanted me to find the blood sample of a patient who supported Bill 54 clothes, specifically. And when I did, he slipped a wad of cash in my pocket. Told me to keep my mouth shut, or he'd silence me for good. I had no idea what was meant to frame old man Marty. He told you more, didn't he? I, I... You seem to really want us to crack down on Carlone for some reason. I think you're not telling us something. Isn't it obvious? That man's having Daniels frame every single patient that supports the bill. That strange man is trying to put in a bad word for the supporters. I don't want to have to arrest an old friend, but if I have to... The, the man brought me in some sort of deal, okay? Cologne was just the beginning. Soon it was going to be Sammy Johnson, Marie Lemmingsworth, all of them Bill supporters. The list goes on and on. But why, Daniels? I can't even begin to tell you the severity of that man's plan. It goes bigger than you. It goes bigger than me. It, it goes bigger than this whole vault. Then tell me. 
Who's behind it all? No, I can't. Then I'm afraid I'm going to have to take you in. Cuff him, Bunny. No, I won't let you. Doctor, no! Put it down, Daniels. If you take me in, I'll be killed on the inside. If internal vault security finds out I squealed, they'll beat me till I stop screaming. We'll do our best to keep you breathing, Doctor. You're just going to have to surrender to authorities first. <laughs> you mean the overseer's men? The monsters that want to keep the vault closed? No cigar, Detective. No cigar. I knew you were no good. <laughs> I'm sorry you have to see this, Bunny. But I'm not letting this degenerate halt the growth of America. Goodbye, Detective. You were useful while you laughed. Bunny, look out! <laughs> I'm... I'm sorry, Doctor. I... I'm sorry. Come on, Bunny. Let's get out of here. I'll have a coroner take him to the morgue. I... I didn't mean to... I didn't. I know, Bunny. I know. I didn't mean to either. We'll get to the bottom of this before long. Now let's go. I'll have a word with the overseer about this in the morning. Come on. This has been the fourth thrilling episode of True Vault Escapades. The part of Walter Camry was portrayed by Eric Huffman, and the part of Bunny was portrayed by Amy Harris. Overseer McKenzie by Jason Darman. Officer Jensen by Josh Bull. O'Neill by Michael Onley. Daniels by Danny W. Next week, at the same time, be sure to tune in to the thrilling conclusion. War never changes. Will Walter figure out who's behind the string of odd murders occurring around the vault? And more importantly, will he secure the safety of Vault 54? Only time will tell in the epic conclusion of True Vault Escapades. True Vault Escapades is originally broadcast on the Old World Tunes radio station and mobile app, brought to you by Nobex Technologies. Entire production was written and directed by Preston Harden. Original cover art by Ali Shellman. Old World Tunes can be accessed on iOS, Android, and BlackBerry devices. Other streaming outlets include the Radionomy website and app, and falloutfm.playtheradio.com. We now return you to our regular scheduled programming.